21. Uh, I'd like to first ask you if you have a cell phone, please silence it or cut it off so that we don't get interrupted by it ringing uh, while we're in session today. Uh, my name is Joe Mulaney. I serve as Special Master for the City of Winter Haven. Um, first thing I'd like to ask you to do with me now is if you'll rise and uh, join me in the same place.
at what point I am at, the, at their uh, application process, eligibility process. Okay. So you are in the process of getting assistance to rehab the property? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll be glad to consider that. I'll be glad to make it part of the record. Yeah. Um, <coughs> the fine will, irrespective of where you are with the process, the fine will continue to okay. improve until the property is brought in compliance. Once you're in compliance, you can come back with a reduction request. Okay. Um, part of their um, package when you apply for this assistance is you have to stop doing anything to the property at the time. I, they, they have not given me a copy of that uh, form. The person I'm working with, she was trying to find out if she could hand, give me the, the form, but uh, the copy of it, but she doesn't know yet. She's not that uh, They have to check. To give you a copy. To give me a copy of the form where you have to stop, stop everything you're doing. So the people come in, they uh, the they sign the case workers or, and they come in and they uh, inspect the property and then they tell you what they're going to do. Well, let me That's ask what you. I'm waiting on right now. Okay, let me ask you this: Do, do you disagree with Mr. Garcia's testimony that the property is not in compliance at this time? No. Okay. All right. I appreciate what you're going to do to get assistance to take care of that, but the, the fine continues to I understand that. And the explanation that you're giving is something that I or whoever's serving special magistrate, if you would come back before a uh, special magistrate with a request for reduction of fine, that would be something that would be taken into consideration. Uh, it just, <coughs> everything you do with them, with this, or the department, uh, it takes about 30 to 45 days for them to get the process going. Okay, well, I understand. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to go ahead. If you'd like to put a, a copy of that letter into the record, I'll be glad to receive it. Unless there's an objection by the city. The city has no objection. Okay. Well, what I'm going to do today now is I'm going to go ahead and certify the fines for the amounts. For the amount and the cost as well. Uh, and then once you once you're in compliance, uh, you can make a request for a reduction. So this is just multiple copies right. in mm -hmm. one letter. Okay. Any objections from the city to this letter coming into evidence? No objection. All right, thank you, ma'am. Your letter will be admitted into evidence to become a part of the record, but I will enter an order finding that uh, uh, the fines that were approved today total uh, $9,550 as well as the uh, cost of $112.80. Thank you. 
2255, property address 317 3rd Street, Northeast. Jed Sue Taylor. Anyone here on that? Ms. Taylor? Give her a report. Ms. Woods, this appears to be your case. Case for us. Tanya Ayers, the compliance supervisor. I will be presenting today for Michelle Woods. This is case number 18-255. Violation address is 317 3rd Street, Northeast. It is owned by Janet C. Taylor. Michelle Woods first inspected the property on March 5, 2018 and observed violations listed on the affidavit of noncompliance. A notice of violation was sent by certified mail and a copy of the notice was posted at the property and City Hall on April 30, 2018. The notice gave 30 days to correct the violation. Woods re-inspected the property on June 12, 2018 and the violations were not corrected. The photos on the screen accurately depict the violations and were taken by Woods on June 12, 2018 and November 19, 2018. An affidavit of violation and notice of hearing was sent by certified mail and a copy of the notice was posted at the property and City Hall on January 7, 2019. I last inspected the property March 18, 2019 and the property was not in compliance. There were no visible improvements. This case was originally scheduled for January 17th special magistrate hearing. Ms. Taylor was not present at that hearing. She submitted a letter requesting continuance to March, which was granted. She was notified of the continuance by Michelle Woods by email on January 18th and by regular mail on January 22nd. In requesting an order finding violation and recommending 30 days for compliance or $25 per day fine be imposed. I am also requesting that the cost incurred by the city for processing this case be assessed. Cost to date total $308.31. <coughs> Would you state your name for the record, please? Yes, Janet Sue Taylor. Okay, Ms. Taylor, you are the owner of the property? I am. Okay. You've heard the testimony of the code enforcement officer. What would you like to be taken into consideration this morning? Well, first, I'd like to say good day, Special Magistrate Laney. Thank you. Um, and as stated, I am Janet Taylor, owner of 317 3rd Street Northeast. Before I explain my situation, I would like to take a moment to thank you, uh, Special Magistrate, for this continuance of my case. On September 10th, 2017, Hurricane Irma hit Winter Haven in my home, and my son lives and works in St. Petersburg, Florida. He came to check on my home, and however, I did not know the extent of the damage until weeks later. Because on September 17, 2017, Hurricane Maria hit the island of Dominica, a category 5 plus plus plus. And I am a snowbird, and I do have a home there, and I witnessed 95% devastation because I was there at the time the hurricane hit. It took nine days before I was able to contact my family, and I had to evacuate to another island. And over the next year, I had to monitor, guard, and repair the property on that island. It took six months for water to be restored, and it took a year for electricity. Um, these circumstances put me in a very challenging situation, uh, both physically, emotionally, and financially. Uh, being displaced to another island and dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder and financial burdens have definitely taken their toll. I just arrived in Winter Haven Monday to address the code compliance issues. I am retired, I'm 71 years old, and I rely on my monthly social security in the amount of $1,428 to make ends meet. My adult children have made it clear that they want me to be alive and safe, and consequently my son has suggested that I move to St. Pete. 317 3rd Street Northeast is now on the market to be sold. As I speak, there is a crew of men cutting my lawn, trimming the bushes, and handling the damage to the canopy. Um, I have pictures verifying that if that's necessary. Uh, and then on Tuesday, I met with a builder and he gave me an estimate of repairs, which I have here in my hands. Um, and then these will address the rest of the problems noted um, in your code compliance and photos. So Special Magistrate, um, will you work with me please to see that the repairs can be done in a timely manner and that the money for them can be available through my social security payments. 
Um, I feel at this time that six months could be considered. I'm fully aware that the compliance is past due, but I ask for lenience in my case um, by reducing the penalties and working with me due to these very strange circumstances of being hit in two separate dwellings by two separate hurricanes. And I thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. So you're requesting that uh, you don't deny that the violations exist. I you? do not. Okay. You're requesting that you be given 180 days for six months? That is correct. Okay. Uh, the city have any response to that request? Due to the violations that we've cited, six months seems excessive. What was originally observed and cited was damage to siding on the accessory structure, torn and hanging awning material around the house, missing window on top floor above front door. So there's the, the violations <coughs> cited are fairly minor and should be, in our opinion, corrected within a 30-day period. May I, may I address that? Yes. Um, yes, uh, based on the estimate here, I do not have that type of funding in 30 days to pay for all that. The estimate is in my hands if you would like to look at it. Well, let me ask you this, um, Ms. Taylor. Is this property occupied? No, it isn't. Well, I come back and forth, but otherwise there's no one there except myself. Okay. And how long has it been since you became aware of the damage to the property? Let me go back and think. Um, my son originally <laughs> called me in January of this year. Um, evidently, he, had, he goes back and forth and checks the property for me. And he said he found a flyer from the United States Postal Service on my front porch. And he happened to look at it because it was certified. And he said, you know, I think this is from the city compliance. You better address this. And that was the first time that I knew that I was not in compliance. I did know that there was damage to my house. I found that out, uh, let's see, probably no, end of November. Uh, it was a very confusing and emotional time, so I, I can't make the dates absolute, and I, I apologize for that. Okay. Anything else you'd like for me to take into consideration? Just that my Social Security comes once a month. Do you have, you mentioned your son, do you have anybody that manages this property or watches over it in your absence? He was the only one that was doing that, and he he drives back and forth from St. Pete to check it. Your Honor, the city certainly recognizes and can appreciate the challenges um, that uh, Ms. Taylor has faced. Uh, we would have no objections to provide an additional time, um, perhaps maybe 120 days. Um, however, 108 days does seem excessive given the nature of the violations and the fact that it <coughs> did occur in 2017. Okay, thank you. Thank uh, you heard the, the recommendation by the city. Uh, um, can, can you give me that advice? <coughs> I'm sorry, I was listening and I missed it. How many months is that? 120 days, roughly four months. Okay, thank you. Which I was inclined to go 60 days, so. Um, I think that's generous on the city's part. Thank you very much. And I, I will go along with the city's recommendation uh, for, uh, and, and I will enter an order finding the violations do, did exist and continue to exist on the property. Uh, my order will allow you 120 days to bring the property into compliance or the fine of $25 a day uh, will commence to accrue. I will also assess the city's cost, the amount of uh, $308.31. Uh, those costs will be payable within 30 days. Okay. So my question is how do I pay those, where do I pay them, and to whom do I pay them? You'll receive an order in the mail with our contact information on it. So the payments can be made by phone through with credit card. They can be made by check or cash, however you choose to do that. We're located at the police department. Our contact information will be on that order. Okay, I will contact you again as I have in the past. Right, if you want to take Megan's card off of the back table, you'd contact Megan for payments. For Megan, okay. 
Ms. Taylor, I noticed that uh, the notices are being sent to a P.O. box here in Winter Haven, which I presume is the mailing address shown on the property appraiser's uh, records for purposes of yes. taxes and mm -hmm. things of that nature. Does somebody check that? Yes, all of my property taxes are up to date. All of my utility bills are up to date. My uh, security system is up to date. Okay. Yes, that is checked. All right. Um, okay, thank you. I will enter an order consistent with what I previously announced. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. I will enter an order consistent with what I announced earlier, which is 120 days to bring the property into compliance. A $25 a day fine will commence to accrue. At that time, it is not, if it is not in compliance, the city's costs, the amount of $308.31 are assessed. Those are payable within 30 days. And incident of all that, finding that the violations did exist and continue to exist as of today's date. And the violations were not corrected. The photos on the screen accurately take the violations and were taken by Michelle on January 29, 2019. An outdated violation and notice of hearing was sent by certified mail and a copy of the notice was sent to the property in the city hall on March 11. I inspected the property March 18, 2019, and the property was not in compliance. This violation was originally reported by the fire department as an unsafe structure. Michelle spoke with Blanche Hutchinson on July 25, 2018. Ms. Hutchinson advised the structure is vacant and the vehicle belonged to her deceased father. No contact from the owner since August. I am requesting an order finding violation and recommending 60 days for compliance or a $100 per day fine be imposed. I am also requesting that costs incurred by the city for processing this case be assessed. Cost to date total $210.77. Okay, thank you very much. Um, yes, ma'am, would you identify yourself for the record, please? Blanche Hutchinson. Ms. Hutchinson, you are one of the owners of the property, correct? I'm the daughter of the owner. Okay. Yeah, but I'm the one that's been making the contacts with Michelle. Okay. Um, what would you like for me to take into consideration this morning? Well, <clears throat> my mom and I, we're slowly moving everything out. And as soon as we get all of our stuff out, we're probably going to end up demolishing the building. And um, it's just a matter of time. We're slowly getting it out, but when you, she's been in it for more than 50 years, and I've been in there close to that, we've accumulated a lot of stuff from past renters and everything that we're trying to go through and see what could be given away, what we need to keep, what needs to be just disposed of. Um, we had work going on, but I had to stop the work until I could get caught up on payments, because I still owe the people that were doing some work a good deal of money and luckily they let me pay a little at a time so I'm still doing that no one lives in the building no one's lived in the building for probably over 20 years now just my mother and I until the past few years so your present plan is to remove what personal property you have from the, the real property and yes, sir. demolish the building yes sir um, okay, anything else you'd like for me to take into consideration? Um, the car is insured and operable. It has a tag, it has insurance. We're just, my brother's trying to sell it. So far we haven't had a buyer yet. And we just keep it covered to try to protect it a little more from the elements. Sir, based on my inspection on the 18th, I would like to remove the car from the violations on the order because it did appear that all of the tires were inflated. There was a tack on the vehicle and it was properly covered, which is allowed under our code. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Hutchinson, uh, what is your timetable for getting all of this done? <laughs> It's slow process because I work all day and sometimes all night it seems like grading papers and whatnot. So um, we hadn't really talked about a time frame if we could have until at least the 
end of summer? I don't know what city's response to that is, if you have a response, I'll be glad to consider it. If the ultimate goal is demolition, the furthest out the city would be comfortable with would be six months to allow them time to get quotes and get, because it, it's, it's a large structure, it's going to be costly to demolish it. Mm. Okay. Um, yeah, my concern is that it is cited as an unsafe structure, and I can see the photographs. That it's yes, got some that's that one problems. station in the back. The area of concern is on the back side of the structure, it's not easily accessible, certainly not without trespassing. It is definitely of concern, but it is not an immediate threat to the life, safety, and welfare of the public unless they are on the property trespassing in the rear yard. Okay. All right, uh, Ms. Hutchinson, what I'm going to do is um, consistent with the representations made by the city and by you as well, I will. Uh, I'm going to find that uh, the violations, with the exception of the motor vehicle, I'll find that there is no violation as to the motor vehicle. Uh, but there are violations as to the other three cited code provisions. And uh, my order will provide that uh, those would be corrected in 180 days, within 180 days. And if they're not corrected within that time, a fine of $100 a day will commence to approve. Have Your Honor made a city request uh, the maximum fine in the event that the property is not demolished, which would be two hundred fifty dollars per day, given that this is an unsafe structure. Two fifty as opposed to the one hundred. Yes, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Hutchinson. Yes, sir. You've heard their request. Any response to that? No, sir. Okay. All right. Um, let me start over here. All right. I'm going to find that the violations did exist and continue to exist as to the cited violations 1, 3, and 4, uh, exterior walls, unsafe structure, window skylights, and door frames. Um, my order will uh, provide that we have 180 days to bring the property in compliance. And in the event that it is not in compliance, then a daily fine of $250 will commence to approve. I'm also going to assess the city's cost in the amount of $210.77. Those will be payable for the third days. Thank you. Located at 401 Avenue M Northeast. Okay. Plenty Airs Code Enforcement Officer for City of Winter Haven is number 183443. The violation address is 401 Avenue M Northeast and is owned by Orpheus Family Limited Partnership. Michelle Woods first inspected the property on November 6, 2018 and observed a renovation in progress, including new windows and no permit on record. A notice of violation was sent by certified mail and received by the owner on December 4, 2018. The notice gave 10 days to correct the violations. Michelle re-inspected the property on December 17, 2018 and the violations were not corrected. The photos on the screen accurately depict the violations and were taken by Michelle on June 7, 2018 and January 29, 2019. An affidavit of violation notice of hearing was sent by certified mail and received by the owner on February 20, 2019. As of March 28, 2019, no permit had been issued for the windows. On March, well, on March 18th, I received confirmation in writing from the building department that they had not received any applications for window permits. And requesting an order finding violation and recommending 10 days for compliance or $25 per day fine being imposed. I am also requesting the cost incurred by the city for processing this case be assessed. Cost today total $173.14. Thank you. Again, anyone here on the property located at 401 Avenue with them northeast? Okay, there appears to be no one here. I will in order finding that uh, the violation uh, existed and continues to exist. Uh, the property owner will be afforded 10 days to bring the property to compliance or a fine of $25 a day will be um, will commence to approve. Also, the city's cost the amount of $173.14 are assessed. Those will be paid within 30 days of today's date. <coughs> okay, next is uh, 
case number 18-1519, property located at 920 Drexel Avenue, Northeast. Anyone here on that property? 920 Drexel Avenue, Northeast. Okay. Uh, Ms. Harris, are you presenting this one? Tanya Harris, the code enforcement officer for the city of Mount Haven. Case number 18 1519. The violation address is not on <coughs> Drexel Avenue Northeast and is owned by Roger W. Colt. Michelle Woods first inspected the property on December 10, 2018, and observed a crane, stagnant pool, and refrigerator in the rear yard. A notice of violation was sent by certified mail and received by the owners on December 17, 2018. The notice gave 15 days to correct the violation. Michelle re-inspected the property on January 18, 2019, and the violations were not corrected. Photos on the screen accurately depict the violations and were taken by Michelle on February 5, 2019. An affidavit of violation and notice of hearing was sent by certified mail and received by the owner on February 20, 2019. Michelle last inspected on March, 8, on March 12, and the property was in compliance. I'm requesting an order finding violation, no fine imposed, and also requesting the cost incurred by the city for processing this case be assessed. Cost today total two hundred dollars and forty seven cents. Okay, thank you. Again, anyone here on this property? Okay. Based on the evidence testimony presented, I will enter an order finding the violations that did exist, but the property is now in compliance. Uh, the owner will be assessed two hundred dollars uh, and forty seven cents. <coughs> City costs those should be paid within 30 days of today's date. This is case number 18 1525. The violation address is 1965th Street Northeast and is owned by the estate of Rebecca Smith. Michelle Woods first inspected the property November 28, 2018, and observed a semi in a residential zone and parking on the front yard. A notice of violation was sent by certified mail and received by the owner on December 11, 2018. The notice gave five days to correct the violation. Michelle re-inspected the property on February 6, 2019, and the violation was not corrected. The photos on the screen accurately pick the violations and were taken by Michelle on February 6, 2019. An affidavit of violation and notice of hearing was sent by certified mail, and a copy of the notice was posted at the property and City Hall on March 11, 2019. I last inspected the property on March 18, and the property was in compliance. I am requesting an order finding violation, no fine imposed. I am also requesting the cost incurred by the city for processing this case be assessed. Cost to date total $271.47. Okay, so your testimony is that the property is now in compliance? Yes, sir, as of March 18th. Mm -hmm. Good morning, sir. Yeah. Would you state your name for the record, please? And what is your relationship to the property? Uh, the, the. Right, sir. You've heard the testimony presented by the code enforcement officer. What would you like to take into consideration today? City's cost, the amount of $271.47, those to be paid within 30 days. Are you a tenant at the property, or I notice this is held in the name of the state. Are you an heir, or? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm related. Okay. Well, then, just for your benefit, the significance of this is that there's a repeat violation. Uh, there won't be a grace period to come into compliance. A fine will commence to accrue immediately. A fine will commence to accrue once the violation is discovered. Yeah, I actually want to address the part. Okay, very good. All right, sir. So I will enter an order in case number 18 1525, finding that a violation did exist, but the property is now in compliance. The property owner shall have uh, 30 days uh, to pay the city's costs, which are assessed the amount of $271.47. So is that the total uh, pay? Yes, sir. Uh, the $271.47 that's payable within 30 days. Okay, next is case number 18 1553, property located at 1706 Terry Circle Northeast. Anyone here on that? Yes, sir. 
This is case number 18-1553. Violation address is 1706 Terry Circle Northeast and is owned by Lucretia C. Smith. Michelle Woods first inspected the property on December 7th, 2018 and observed an untacked car with flat tire and no visible address numbers on the house. A notice of violation was sent by certified mail and received by the owner on January 11th, 2019. The notice gave 15 days to correct the violations. Michelle re-inspected the property on January 29th and the violations were not corrected. The photos on the screen accurately depict the violations and were taken by Michelle on January 29th, 2019. An affidavit of violation and notice of hearing was sent by certified mail and received by the owner on February 16th, 2019. Michelle last inspected the property on February 20th and the property was in compliance. I am requesting an order finding violation, no fine imposed, and requesting that the cost incurred by the city for processing this case be assessed. Cost to date total $213.44. Okay. Yes, sir, would you state your name for the record, please? James Hogan. Uh, Mr. Hogan, what is your relationship to the property? Uh, I'm the that Lucretia is my wife. Okay, all right, sir. Uh, what would you like to do take into consideration today? Um, there's a question, of course, it doesn't have a tag on it, but as far as it being inoperable, it was operable, it doesn't have a flat tire. Um, Michelle, or oh, Miss Woods, I don't really know about Michelle, but I'm sure Michelle a lot. So, Miss Woods, um, and she came out, I, I actually was standing in my yard one day and she came out to, to look at some violations on some, on, I thought she was coming to mind, but she didn't. She, I stood out in my front yard and <clears throat> she went to the, the house over next to me because the numbers were not on the, uh, on the house, but she never came to my house. And I couldn't understand that because the, the people that lived in those houses were, were standing with me and they talked to her. So I, was, I wondered why she didn't come to, talk to me about um, <clears throat> my violations. You know, right down the street from me, which is the reason why I, I, my understanding she was even out there was just a person who's uh, continually does mechanic work at the house and has been in violation and has never stopped, but he's never been down here. And he, at, as of today, he's still doing mechanical work. And I can understand how come, you know, is there a difference in how these um, codes are enforced or, or what that situation is, but even to this day, um, you know, he's still doing mechanic work. In fact, I ended up asking him about when he has a, a vehicle in his yard that doesn't have a tag and doesn't run, and Michelle told him all he had to do was put a, um, a, a tarp over the car and he'd be fine. And I just wonder why I didn't get that same courtesy to say, hey, you, you, you can do it this way and, and we won't have an issue, but instead I had to go and you know, I got four cars, got three drivers. So I go out and, 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 and spend $400 to put a tag on my car and insurance and this type of stuff, um, even though I rarely drive it. And uh, I just, you know, I, I don't, I can't say that, you know, this didn't exist, but I, I just, I'm wondering why there's a difference in how we, there's no real consistency, it, it looks to me, in how the, the codes are being enforced. Mr. Holden, when Michelle originally cited your property, it was that your vehicle was inoperable. It was due to, it was backed in with a flat tire without a plate, and you also didn't have address numbers. She left a door tag. She did attempt to make contact and left the door tag at your door. It's because it's an inoperable vehicle. You can't just cover an inoperable vehicle. Well, that, no. And if there's another case on your neighbor, then you can call our office, and we'll be happy to give you the details yeah, on that I, case. Yeah, I don't really, you, it, that, well, it, well it, you, you know, I don't have a problem with my neighbor. My concern is that in, in Ms. Wood's case, um, apparently she does not do her enforcement consistently because um, I've seen that in, in, in my particular neighborhood. And I know that, in fact, one of my other neighbors called in just recently and made, made that complaint again because he's right next door to this, this person. So, you know, there's a, you know, I, I, I don't, I, I'm going to do what I have to do, then that, that's fine. I just, wanted to bring that uh, the attention that and, you know and, and like my, my I brought my stuff in compliance February 20th called couldn't get a reply from Michelle couldn't get a reply from Michelle um, actually I brought it in compliance in, in, uh, around the 15th but you know while I was out of town she finally called me at, at a conference to say oh yeah I went back and checked everything is good and um, if you call me back I can let you know you still need to come to the hearing 
And so I've tried contacting her and left messages several times reference to that. And finally, I, I was able to reach someone. I called a different number. And I talked to, to someone named Megan um, about um, why I had to still come to this hearing, why I needed to still come to this hearing. But, you know, it is what it is, and that's, that's why I'm here. So I just want to make that point. Just for your reference, Section 302.8, of motor vehicles, except as provided for in other regulations, no inoperative or unlicensed motor vehicle shall be parked, kept, or stored on the premises, and no vehicle shall be or shall at any time be in a state of major disassembly, disrepair, or in the process of being stripped or dismantled. But it clearly states un unlicensed, so that would be untagged. Um, so that's why it's, it's defined as inoperable. Um, the common sense or regular use of the term inoperable, meaning mechanical uh, inoperability, would not be uh, directly applicable. Although still relative, uh, an unlicensed or untagged vehicle is considered pursuant to our code inoperable. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you, sir. Um, and I don't take it as a special match, but I look at each case as it's presented to me. I don't take into consideration what enforcement actions are or are not being taken against other properties. I'm just looking at one property in violation of site of that property. Um, so I am going to enter an order finding that the violation did exist, but that the property is now in compliance. Um, and also finding that that the city's cost to the amount of $213.44 are going to be assessed. Those will be payable within 30 days. Okay? Sixteen ninety-three property located at 29 7th Street Southwest. Anyone here on that property? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Block off the full fence, 
and also the fence is six foot, and it's only a four foot fence allowed to be in that area on the other side of the street side. And Your Honor, the gate, uh, the alleyway was a platted alleyway, um, and the city has maintained the alleyway. There's utilities uh, located within the alleyway, and that the fencing, not fencing, but the gate does prevent or prohibit emergency vehicles from accessing that portion of the alleyway from being able to use that as a through street in the event of an emergency. So the city would also be requesting that, that if the gate is not removed, that the city be authorized to abate. Swear a firm testimony gives David the truth and the whole truth. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Thank you, sir. All right, gentlemen, if you would uh, identify yourself for the record and tell me what you'd like for me to take into consideration today. Uh, my name is Andrew Gaffney. My wife is the president of my Evans LLC. I my name is T. Gregory Girl. I'm a general contractor and defense contractor on this property. We are a school where my Keelans LLC doing business as the Keelans Angels Christian Academy to address the first issue of the tax receipt. Uh, the city of Warren has special provisions for schools. Uh, that we don't have to have that. Um, I spoke with them as of uh, a couple weeks ago, and she said that she would call them to make them aware of that. Um, we, we are a school. We deal with special needs kids with certain stuff as autism, deafness, blindness, mental retardation, multiple disabilities, hearing impairment, developmental delays and brain trauma. We do own both of the properties, the 29, 7th Street, and the 17. Unfortunately, there's an alley that sits between them. Kids with these disabilities don't recognize that 14-foot alley. Uh, we're not intentionally blocking them um, right away for no other needs than uh, to protect the kids. Uh, they come out of the building, they go to the playground, you'll see to the right is the playground, and they don't recognize that 14 foot there. So what we have installed is a gate to protect us from the elements that surround us, drug dealing, uh, meth addicts, homeless. Uh, there's also been a murder right there in that alley. Um, so what we do is we, when, when the school, when the kids get ready to come out for recess, we take time to close the gate so that we don't have to worry about through traffic. We've experienced stuff such as uh, people walking on the property, uh, unpermitted walking on the property, drive, people driving through there at high rates of speed. Uh, the, city have, the city approved us to be a school. Uh, the city still has to come out and put school zoning signs up for us to be recognized. And we're not really sure why they haven't did it. Also, um, unlike Mr. Hogan, who was up here earlier, said there's no consistency in this. Um, there's a school less than two blocks away from us, behind Firestone, and they have the same fence that we have. So what we're asking the city is to 
give us the opportunity to protect these kids. Um, and the only way that we know how to protect them is to put that gate there. Please make some special provisions for us if needed. Um, it's the, we're doing it for no, for no other reason than to protect the kids. Uh, could you make some special provisions for us where we can do this? Um, we're, it's not a, the fence is not it's not a fence it's a gate I mean, give me access to the city also um, when they were doing some uh, they were doing some uh, the police were doing some community service the chief had came out and he said he thinks it's a good idea that the drug dealers can't make that path through the issues are the income properties that are in the back is where the drugs are being taken care of and a murder had occurred in the back of the school that brown building just he said to the right also, the fire marshal, when they came to come out and do their inspections every month, they said access to that alley is not a problem. If he, if there was an, in the event there's an emergency, they'll just drive through or break the lock. Uh, it's not a lock. It's, uh, I'm not sure. I brought the, uh, the fencing contract with me, with me so he can explain the, the latch. It's a latch. Excuse me. It's not a lock. It's a latch. And what it does is it just latches in there to keep the kids safe from, from also the major construction. You guys got the 7th Street projects going on. We thank God to be a part of that. But it's, it's bulldozers that were running up and down the street all day. Uh, people come to that four-way stop sign and never stop. They shoot right through it on a daily basis. So um, with that being said, we just want to protect the kids. And if we don't block that, if we don't block that alleyway with that gate, then they'll just run in the streets. Uh, people running in there are expensive. People driving through there, and people walking onto the property. And um, with that being said, I brought the contractor who installed the fence with us to make any arrangements that you guys will, if, if you're in the event, you would do that for us, and. Um, we're not denying that the fence is blocking. And if there are bonds and poles, we're, 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 we're able to pay the bonds. But we got to protect the kids. We, we serve special need kids. Yeah, and Your Honor, the city doesn't debate what, whether or not they own property on both sides of the alleyway because they do. Um, and I believe it's multiple lots on both sides if you look at the property appraisal's website. But the alleyway is dedicated public property. It's platted. Um, it has been improved and maintained by the city. Uh, the city, whether or not it only happens one time that we need or the city needs to have emergency access to that alleyway, and you have a gate which is preventing that from happening. It's not going to be whether there's a latch or a lock. It's the gate is preventing access to the alleyway, which is a public alleyway. Um, now, I'm not saying that there's not things that they can or cannot do on both sides of the alleyway to protect the children. Um, I won't speculate as to what those options may or may not be, but the alleyway needs to be uh, accessible at all times. Okay, with that being said, who's liable for a kid getting run over out there? Is it our, our, our are the city going to be liable for it? Or is it our liability? I'm not going to tell you how to run your business, but I'm, I am telling you that that's a public alleyway. Sure. So you, you, you have blocked or prevented access to a publicly owned alleyway um, that has been maintained by the public, by the city, and you're asking for now special exceptions after the fact. The alleyway needs to be accessible by all the emergency vehicles at all times by- It is. No, sir, not with the fence, not with the gate locking the alleyway. That's the city's position, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. You mentioned, sir, something about that at the very beginning, something about a permit or a license that you were not required to have. Yeah. No, sir, not permit or license. This is a tax thing. That's uh, not part of this okay. case. All right, I, I'm sorry. Joe had mentioned it. He Pardon? mentioned it earlier. I'm looking at three violations I, here. I, I'm just trying to see if what you said had any bearing on the violations that are presented to me. And, and that, does have, that doesn't have any weight. It has nothing to do with the violations that have been cited. So yes, it does. If he mentioned it in the record, he mentioned it in the record when we first started this conversation. If I'm, am I correct, Joe? Did you mention the business tax? Yes, I did, but it's not one of the violations that you're being advocated. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm not worried about it, okay? 
Thank you. Right. Anything else uh, you want to? Well, I can tell you why I installed the fence. I can see it here. On the back side of the building, there's a little mini stairwell. Drug users were sitting on the property when we were installing the fence. I actually called Sean and explained to him that they should come out because there were drug users on the school property as we're installing the fence using drugs in the middle of the day. Now, I know no one wants their kids at a school where drugs are permitted on the premises. Yes, that's an alley, and I told Sean, I thought maybe by now, it's been two, maybe three years ago when we put the fence up. I didn't know there still was going on. But I saw drug users on the property that day as we were installing the fence. Now, they cleaned the area of some, but it was a major. Now, there's another <coughs> entry on the other side of this property. So there's access to the alley from the other way as well. That's not impeded by a fence or a gate. So when you say there's no way for emergency vehicles to get in, there is on the other end of the street. That they can come up to the back side of the school and that, that gives them access to every property on the other side of that alley. So there is another way for an emergency or an individual to walk through the alley, just not through the school property. So that technically speaking is not school property where the gate is on or, in, or pro prohibiting access to the alleyway and there is a gate on both sides of the, um, of the, of the school. Correct. But as I said, when you say there's no access for emergency vehicle to the alley, there is. That, through that through street, correct, there is no access. It is on the other end of the street. Okay, well, I, and the, the permit required, that violation is just a permit to be within, <coughs> having a structure within the public right away. Is that correct? As I understand the violation of the site? Yes. And I, I also understand the code provides that the maximum height of a fence in this zoning district is four feet. And this is a six-foot fence. Yes, so the four-foot requirement is only, according to the planning, is for only for the Seventh Street side. The other four, three sides can have a six-foot fence. Okay. All right. Can I ask you a question on the zoning for the four-foot fence? Is that for residential? That's for commercial also. It was on. I put quite a few fences up for schools around the county, and not one single school has ever had a four foot fence. The, the okay. problem with that is that if you're a private business running a school, the private schools should not consider public, and public schools are exempt from the zoning laws. Public schools are a whole different deal as to what codes. But I'm asking, is that four foot high for residential? It's for residential, office professionals, zone one, and zone twos. Okay, anything else I'd like to be taken into consideration? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, so, he, so you just want the four foot on the se on the seven street side, is what you're saying? Yes, sir. Could I want some clarity from him what he's saying? Uh, uh, it's clear that a violation exists, at least to part of the fence, okay? But it is a violation in excess of the four feet, or at least part of the fence. What side of what side? Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to enter an order to find that violations do exist as to all three uh, violations that were cited and that they continue to exist as of today's date. Um, I'm going to give you more than 30 days to get it resolved. So what do I do? Just open, is opening the gate enough? Just open I'm the not, gate? Sir, I'm not here to advise you as to what you need to do to bring it into compliance. My job is to hear the evidence and determine whether there is a violation of the code. Sure, you are. And it's, it's clear to me, it's clear to me that the public right of way is being constructed and that there, uh, there's construction even if it is so the fence that has a latch on it, etc. There, there is obstruction within the public right of way. Okay, so. I'm going to give you more than the 30 days because I think you're going to need more than 30 days to resolve this, but not much more than that. I'm going to push it out to 60 days. I'll give you 60 days to um, find the violations uh, do exist, that, that they did exist at the time of citation, they continue to exist. I'm going to give you 60 days to come into compliance. Uh, our fine of $250 a day will commence to accrue. 
However, in response to the city's request that uh, the obstruction of the alleyway be abated, uh, my order will provide that the, uh, that the obstruction of the alleyway will be corrected within 30 days uh, or the city can take abatement action. Thank you, Your Honor. Also, I will assess the city's cost in the amount of two hundred eighty-eight dollars and seventy cents, so should be paid within thirty days. Of the past day. Okay. Okay. Uh, I see that the uh, next case, I assume, is related to this one. Well, if you gentlemen are here on uh, case number nineteen dash two nine six, property located at seven seventeen Avenue A. Is this the same property? Okay. Well, they're separate cases, so. Um, they're they're run separately. They weren't put together. So, sure. Okay, um, Mr. Sia, present case nineteen dash two ninety six. Yes, sir. This is case nineteen dash two ninety six. The violation address is seven one seven Avenue A Southwest, and owned by owned by Mike at Cleveland LLC. First of the property on February twentieth, and observed parking lot with six foot chain link fence around the entire property including across the city out of the way. And the fifth is also a case repair and damage in several places. <coughs> notice violation was sent by certified mail. A copy of the notice was posted at the property in City Hall on February 20th. Notice gave 10 days to correct the violations. I re-inspected the property on March 6th and the violations were not corrected. Photos on the screen accurately depict the violations were taken on March 6th. That David violation and notice of hearing was sent by certified mail. And a copy of the notice was posted at the property in City Hall on March 11th. The last inspected the property on March 18th. The property was not in compliance. Requested and order find a violation. Recommended 30 days for compliance or a $250 per day fine be imposed. <coughs> Most requesting that the cost incurred by the city for process in this case be assessed. Cost the date total two hundred and fifty four dollars and seventy cents. Okay, so from my understanding, uh, similar to the case we just heard, uh, we have the same three violations cited, as well as one for the fence maintenance. Yes. That's the additional citation. Your Honor, just briefly, I apologize. The, the photos, which are part of the case file, um, are not in the PowerPoint. I'd like to provide these photos to uh, Mr. Gaffney. Um, to review them in the event you have any objection to these photos. Do you mind if I approach you with these photos? No, please, man. Let's get this off. Can I get some clarity on this, please? Okay, so what, if, what do you want, Joe? You want the four-foot fence on this? No, sir. The <laughs> city is determined that the four-foot fence could stay on this particular piece of land. So the only violation that would exist on this one is still uh, being built across the alleyway. Okay, so it's, is it is it okay? So I'm so I'm 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 clear on that. I'm going to open the gates up. What what are, what are, what, are we, what are we going? On? What's, why does it give me these pictures? It's two separate parcels that you have. Oh, okay. So we had to do two separate cases. Okay. Well, for my benefit, on this particular case, case 19-296, do I understand that the fence height is not an issue on this particular property? No, sir. According to planning, they would be allowed to have it on this particular section, except for the part that comes along 7th Street, which would be four foot requirement. Okay, so the frontage of 7th Street. Yeah, so that's right. The seven portion street. of the fence that is on this property, 717 Avenue A, has to be a four foot requirement. Yes, sir. The rest can be six foot. Okay. And the maintenance issue? Uh, I repair. Fence. I repair that. Yeah, the fence is in disrepair. I um, some of the rails are broken off at the top and damaged. So, was the, this is on the affidavit, the violation that the fence height is. Yes. an issue for this. Was that put on the affidavit, the violation, in error? No, it's, the property is kind of L-shaped with a, Okay, so, okay, so this property wraps around and there's a portion of this parcel that is also on 7th Street. Okay, thank you. Okay, 
so just for um, record's sake, can we bring it all together as one? I mean, the case on the on the course. Yeah. Uh, we can't. Yes, because the one side of the gate is on this property, the other side of the gate is on the other property, so yes, you would need abatement for both cases. Okay, very good. Uh, anything else anybody wants me to take into consideration? We do have Heather Reuter from the Planning Department in case there are any questions about the zoning and the fence height, and she would be happy to answer those questions if you would like. Uh, I'm satisfied at this point. I'm not. I'm real, very confused, and I'd like for the I'd like for the clarity to be right here, so it'll be on the record on what you guys are saying to me, and I'm not clear on any of it except the seven foot side. Of, I mean the seven street side. So you want four foot long seven street? Correct. Okay. Well, but what, what now? What she says. This young lady here has said something that I'm not understanding. Tanya Harris. What, what is it that you don't understand? Nothing that you said. <laughs> you said that, um, you, you, cause you said, you, you brought up something totally different than what I was hearing from Joe saying. What are you saying you want done? You want abatement. You said about the abatement issue. Okay, I, I can explain that to you. Okay. What I asked the question, since on the previous case they asked for abatement of the obstruction of the alley mm -hmm. uh, sooner rather than later because it does present an, an obstruction to access. Okay. I asked if they wanted abatement on this case as well. And it was clarified to me that same problem, just different end of the alley. Okay. So I, what I'm going to do is, uh, consistent with my previous order, as you asked and this all be pulled into one case, it's not going to be all one case, but my ruling is going to be consistent as to both of them. Okay. So you, you're going to have 60 days to come to compliance, or a $250 day fine will commence to accrue in this case, as with the other case. Uh, but as to the abatement, my order will provide that you have 30 days to cure the obstruction of the alleyway. Okay. 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 I have two questions for you, Ron. I'm not finished yet. Okay. And I am going to assess uh, the city's cost, the amount of two hundred fifty-four dollars and seventy cents. Those will be paid within thirty days. Okay. Yes, sir. I will. Okay. For the city attorney, um, could could you make a provision for at least an hour for recess for me to be able to pull the gates through? And the second question is, me opening the gates will be sufficient. My recommendation at this point would be to contact the city's planning department or possibly uh, the city manager's office to determine whether or not there would be some type of uh, equally advantageous solution uh, for the city's uh, interests as well as your private interests. Um, but for purposes of today, we're looking strictly at the violation issue.